Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode in my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you with me into the editing process to talk you through my workflow, my thoughts on an image, and if I've made any mistakes so you don't have to. Now, this week, it's the turn of a visit that I did to a waterfall that I've visited many, many times, and it's a place that always yields shots. However, on the day that I went there, it was after a lot of rain, so I was expecting there to be some good flow in the water, but there wasn't any flow in the water. Now, I know it's summer and we shouldn't have that much flow in waterfalls, but after rain, there should be. But that was the first thing that I was quite surprised with. But the second thing I was quite surprised with was that how busy it was. There was large groups of people, not just looking at the waterfall, but also in swimming. So that presented a big challenge for me to be able to, number one, record a video, but number two, to be able to capture some images. But it also made me think differently. And it made me think about how important it is to return to locations and then to fine tune your different skill sets and the types of shots that you can get. And I was really happy with the shots that I got on that day. And also in that video, I decided to do 10 things that would really help you to improve your own photography. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link to it up here. But for now, we're going to jump onto Lightroom Classic. I'm going to talk you through a very, very simple editing process that I follow for one of my images. So, let's go. Right, so here's my image here now. We'll jump into Lightroom Classic and I'll talk you through, like I said, a very, very simple editing process. So, within the image here, what I have has gone from something which is totally different, but also I really like it. It's kind of a different viewpoint, you know, a different perspective, which is what I want to try and create when I was doing the video. But as you can see here, very simply, what I have is this set of pretty much nondescript rocks. Now, these aren't generally available because with more flow in the water than the water is flowing over these. So that's why I decided to take this opportunity. And in the background here, we've got the base of the waterfall. Now, what I like about this image and the way that I expose it is, if you notice, I focused here on these rocks in the front, and that gave me an opportunity then to have softness or bokeh in the background, but not a lot of bokeh because I shot this here at f13, my ISO was at 50, and I was at two and a half seconds. Now, moreover, if you look, I'm at 200 mil, and that's something I do quite often, and I recommend you do it, is every time you go to a waterfall, bust out your telephoto lens and have a look through and see the differences that you can find because this is a bigger, bigger scene and this now is taking a small aspect of that. And I really like the way this image turned out. I like how this is sharp in the front and then you're gonna get a bit of mystery in the background because it looks like this waterfall could be a lot bigger. So my intention for this image here is to bring out in the background more of the difference in the contrast between the whites and the blacks that are there on the rocks and try and bring a bit more of the green as well here in the front. So to start off with, I'm going to look in very, very simply. And again, you know, I'll do the same as I normally would do is I'll hit on the auto button. That will give me a good start. It'll tell me, okay, what do I like? What do I don't like? And what can I improve and what adjustments will I make? And I'll generally always adjust the sliders anyway, but it just gives you a good idea from the auto point of view. On this occasion, I think it's made the image too bright. So what it has done is it brought up the exposure and I understand why it's done that. If I just go back again to reset, <clears throat> I understand why it's done that is because it looks at this entire scene and sees a lot of dark and even get the histogram here, it does see a lot of dark. And that is correct. Why? Because there's a lot of dark in the scene. There's only a small bit of bright areas within the whites. Now, if I just look at that and ignore the auto for a moment and I'll just take these blacks and if I bring these blacks up, watch the histogram and now that small adjustment here all that has done a plus five is it's got rid of the areas that are darker than dark. And in fact, they weren't even darker than dark. It was yellow. It was kind of being close to where it was going to go. Let's look and see. Yeah, of course, it's going to be the dark areas. So there's nothing here on my uh, histogram preview or my shadows preview going blue even at the way I exposed it. So I'm happy the way I exposed that image. Yes, it is dark. But that's because of the overall scene. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look and say, okay, do I need to adjust my highlights? If I bring my highlights down here, it's going to make the image darker. Now I want to make it a small bit brighter, but I don't want the entire image being bright. I only want the white areas to be bright. So if I take my highlights and increase those slightly, that will give me a bit more movement in the histogram. Second then is on the shadows. Now, now generally you would bring up your shadows, but for me, if 
if I bring them up here, it makes the image too bright and too airy. What I want to try and do is to create, keep that mystery uh, on the background and only having the white in the background. So I'm not even going to adjust my shadows, I don't think. I'm just going to leave it the way they are here. In fact, yeah, I'll probably even bring them down because I want this to be a darker image. Now, whites. And now have a look here at the back end of the waterfall because these streaks here are what I want to affect. So if I bring those up here, you'll start to see them getting brighter. But you'd also see the areas of total brightness here coming into the overexposed. But I want to affect this area here, so I'm going to talk how I do that in a moment. So from the white's point of view, I'm going to bring that down just so I'm not losing anything here. And then the blacks, like I said, I've already dealt with. Now, straight away on this image here, you know, I could be done. It's a very simple minimalist kind of image but I want to try and be able to bring out these colors here and there's no real other color except for this one rogue leaf and I may not even leave it in the image because it's not sharp because I focused here in the front but it's on the left hand side of the image as well so it's not really adding much value so I might end up taking that out but I'll talk about that in a moment but if I look at my vibrance here and just click on to bringing this up. I want to affect these greens, okay? So if I bring my vibrance all the way up, you see the way those greens are now popping and jumping, but they're a bit kind of sickly, I think. It's too much. So I can bring that down slightly here, and then what I can do is just add a slight bit of saturation to them. And that's all I want them to do, is just slightly lift off of these rocks. It's only going to affect this because, in reality, there's not much other color except for this area up here. But again, we're going to deal with that separately. So that's the uh, main part of my edit done. Now, if I go back in here to my crop tool, and now you can see here that I've got this top area of the waterfall, you see all these streaks that are done. Now, I could look and say, okay, do I go into this and change this to a 16.9? If I change this to a 16.9, I want to keep some of these down here, but then I lose a bit on the top. So I think the crop that I have is actually perfectly fine. That's no issue there. And also what I want to try and do is just to say, okay, do I need to check my angle. I think I was right, but let's just double check it. Yeah, no, it's perfectly fine. So I don't need to do anything with that. Okay, so I can undo this. Now, if I go then um, in here onto um, my masking, okay, so I want to be able to affect this. This is a bit bright here for me. So I can do a linear gradient, okay, holding down shift, dragging up, we'll bring it all the way from the very, very end. So if I take this again and come back down to the bottom here, Pardon me. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll go into brush. And I'm just going to brush over this area here. And I'm going to brush over the brightest part, but I don't want to spill over it too much because I don't want it to affect other parts on the image. But it's just this brighter part of the image. I want to tone that down slightly. So that's going to take, I'm going to bring my highlights down here. And now I'm getting some of the detail back and you can start to see the water jumping up as well on that whole area. The next thing I'm going to do then from that is go into my clone stamp or my heel tool, and I'm going to make my brush the size of this here, and I'm going to take out that leaf. I don't like it there, I don't want it there, it doesn't add value to the image, so you know, be prepared to take rogue elements out when you're doing your edge patrol. Okay, so that's that area done now. And then the final thing I wanna go down here, so if I go into effects and I put a vignette, and if I take that vignette, watch this top area up here, it's going to darken down, so now it becomes not relevant in the, in the overall image but what this does effectively is create more of a mysterious look within the image that's the image pretty much done um i can go back in here and say okay do i need to change this with dehaze watch what happens if i bring in dehaze now is it starts to make the image darker brings the background down and it adds a bit more of depth as well within the image i really like um, this shot from a simplistic point of view it wasn't that difficult either to edit final thing then going into detail here click on my denoise. Now let's see if this worked. If you watched last week's episode, it didn't seem to work. So let's see if it's going to work now and let's see if we have any noise to remove. I don't think we will anyway, but we might find it to be a small few artifacts to resolve. Okay, very, very little here on these rocks, but where the main noise is going to be is in the black and the darks, but that's irrelevant to me because why? I'm shooting the image to be dark anyway. But yeah, look, I think it is going to yeah, clean it up slightly. So, you know, I'm going to run this. Let's see, hopefully it'll work does seem to be working so yeah that's that image here I really like it uh, like I said it's a very simplistic image and I got some totally different um, perspectives on a scene that I would have shot many many times as well before so I hope you've enjoyed seeing the uh, behind the raw on this episode now I hope you can join me on uh, my next episode on Sunday I um, if you saw my uh, episode there from a couple of weeks ago 
when I went out to kill Grey Friary, I was so rudely interrupted by my good buddy and wingman, Dermot O'Donovan. So we agreed, I met up with him, we went to a location that was absolutely beautiful, but we had tough conditions. It was raining, it was low cloud, there was very little light, but I still think we managed to get some really nice shots. So hopefully I'm lucky enough for you to join me on that episode next Sunday. And as always, if it's your first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange fall.